Turpins with Travis Garrison on the Field of Six State Networks. Got a special guest with me today, Mr. Ryan McFadden from the Baltimore Sun. How you doing, sir? How you how you doing? Doing good, man. Doing good. Just busy, but you know, enjoying life. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I, I definitely appreciate you taking time with your day to, to join me to talk to us about some some Turpin basketball, man. Yeah, it, like bring it. Uh, Maryland's off to a three and zero start. Uh, you look at this team. I I personally like this team. They have a lot of depth. Uh, it's be exciting to see how they develop over the course of the year. Uh, like one thing we did notice, like you know, their first half um, offensive struggles are, is kind of concerning, particularly with the three point shooting. I believe I saw they're shooting twenty three percent through three games, but uh, it's still a Turgeon type um, team, de- defense heavy. Uh, and like I said, they got the size back, unlike they had last year. But I think it's gonna be an, it's gonna be an interesting interesting year. What? How do you compare this team to the previous teams? I know you mentioned defense, of course, but and compared to uh, Turgeon's previous teams, how do you compare this team to that? Like, where do you see this team going? Like, what's, what's your prediction so far? I know it's still early, but what are some of your predictions of this season so far? Man, this is it's funny. I was thinking about this before uh, before I hopped on. It's like, I don't know. It's like, I, obviously, I do like this team better than last year. And one particular reason is because of the size in the front court. So you have Q and you have Julian Reese. And like, when you're going, when you're in the Big Ten, like, you need size. Like, like da- Dante Scott was able, um, was able to hold his own last year. Um, but when you're going against Hunter Dickinson in Michigan, Kofi Co- Coburn, um, at Illinois, EJ Liddell at Ohio State, uh, Trayvon Williams at Purdue, you're going to need some size to, on, on the defensive side of the ball and even on offense. And like having Q and Julian uh, just helps them out so much in regards to that. Uh, then you got to, because not only that, not only it helps on the defense, but it helps offensively as well. Because right. if defense have to worry about um, Q and Julian dominating the low post, that's going to open. That's going to open the floor for all your wing guys like like Eric, uh, Dante, Fats, and then so it just creates uh, it creates a lot more. Uh, it brings so much more to that offense. It's just for them now. It's like they need to take advantage of it. Like like I said, they they have not shot the ball incredibly well um, right. throughout the during, through these three games. But if they can put it together, that's that's um, that's going to be interesting. But yeah, I do think this team is a lot better. Uh, one thing I will say, it's been a, it's been a, like, it's for a while, I would say this is one of the deepest teams I've seen in a, in a, in a while. I, and it's not, I'm not talking about talent. I'm just talking about depth where like you have a team where it's like, you look at this roster and you got like eight to nine guys on a rotation that can come in and, and make some form of impact. And, and like I said, we still, there's still guys on that team that who are, who are not even getting minutes. Um, as much minutes throughout this stretch that still, to me, I like and it has potential moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, obviously, you know, they lost a, a couple of key pieces, but like you said, so what do you, th- what do you think about the transfers, the new transfers coming in, you know, obviously with Fats and, you know, the transfer from Georgetown, like what, what do you think about, you think, you know, is it a big help or is, you know, this, you know, it's okay. I, no, I, I would say it's a big help. Uh, I, I'm a huge Fats Russell fan. Uh, I watched some of his game when he was at Rhode Island. In fact, when um, he was in the NCAA tournament in 2018, I forgot whether that was his freshman or sophomore year. I do not recall. Um, when he played against Oklahoma, that was my first time seeing him in person. Um, and like that, and he stood out to me back then. And that was earlier in his college, collegiate career. It just says, he's just a, pes- a pesky defender, um, s- super quick, like. And it's funny, like he was quick back th- when he was at Rhode Island, but seeing it in like live in action is crazy. Like, and I hope more the way he just gets up and down the court is incredible. Um, and that's that's going to help out the Turfs a lot because he brings like a true point guard to that team. And for and like, like we saw last year, we saw uh, we saw Erica Isla and Keem Hart, you know, split the role uh, as that dominant ball handler. But now you got. Fats there, who's obviously that's he's the primary ball handler, and he's going to be running that offense, and that also cre- allows um, er- Erica Isla to play more of that that two guard role, and he can play off the ball, which will help him a lot as well. And like I said, it helps out the offense tremendously. Um, but yeah, then Q, like like I think going into the season, we knew 
We know what Q was going to bring. We saw what he did with Patrick Ewan at Georgetown. Like I said, a, a dominant low post guy, a guy who's going to who's going to block shots, get rebounds. I think that's going to help Maryland a lot, especially getting generating offensive rebounds and kind of keeping possessions alive. Uh, so yeah, I, I, those two guys I like. Ian Martinez is another guy I like. He's I think he still has more to show. However, from what we have seen through three games, he has a lot of defensive versatility. Um, he's a which with, with like with his size and length. Um, not only that, he, he also shows some playmaking abilities to, as well, uh, making mm-hmm. some plays in transition. So those are like those are some like those are three guys that I like. But yeah, Fats is a guy when they sign when they when they when they acquire Fats, I like man, man this is guy this is a guy is gonna be good and just through three games, you can tell like this man's going to be, and I think he's going to be a fan favorite. I'll say this when we get to the end of the year, I think it's fats is going to be a fan favorite in college park. I can see that. I had a, I had him on the show about a couple of weeks ago and um, just having a conversation with him, you know, with his personality and then obviously the way he plays and, and, you know, obviously with defense, you know, and his energy, you know, obviously the, the college pop fans love that those type of guys and that could bring that energy, you know, um, so yeah, like you said, man, definitely I can see him being a fan favorite. Um, let's let's rewind a little bit, real quick, man. So you just started working with the Baltimore Sun, correct? Yes. Just you just start. So how did you? How was that process been for you? And then how did you get to cover the Terps and you know Merlin basketball? How did that all come about? I want to say this. This is. It is, I would say life is crazy, man. I'll, I'll, I'll put it out there because literally back in May, I'm literally at grad school you know, on a Zoom class at the University of Maryland trying to trying to get my, my master's degree. And now we jump into November and I'm covering um, Maryland men's basketball, Maryland football, and the Baltimore Ravens as my first job in this journalism industry. And it's just been an incredible experience. Uh, like I started back in, I started full time in uh, September. September 5th. Uh, however, I've been with the Sun since June as a, I was an intern and they decided to keep me here for long term. But yeah, it's it's been crazy, man. Like I, I love every last bit, bit of it. I, I tell people all the time, it's like I, I've been for, afforded a great opportunity just to come out of college um, to be able to cover a pro football team. Not, only, not any pro football team, it's the Baltimore Ravens and they they have one of the best best football players out in, in the game right now, Lamar Jackson. And then you and not only that, I'm covering a division one um basketball and football program. So it's been it's been a grateful opportunity. I would say this, like it's been busy. Um, so I'm not gonna lie, because you know, obviously like you're alternating between different sports on a week, on a weekly basis. And it's like you gotta like it's like a mental switch. So like Saturdays you're at the Maryland football game, then like you are you got mentally switched to NFL, and then boom, after NFL is done, you got mentally switched to Terps. Um, so it's like constantly like switching gears, uh, on, like basically each and every day. Uh, but yeah, it's been fun. Like I'm still, I always say like I'm still trying to get some form of comfortability with it. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously that comes with being the new guy in town. Um, but yeah, it's been great. It just I I look at it like it just showing all all the hard 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 work I've done over the years since like I say like when not, since I started doing journalism back in high school at Damatha has paid off and I've just been grateful for this opportunity. Hold on man, you're a Damatha guy too? Yes sir. <laughs> yes class oh, of 2015. Oh, hey that just changed that just changed this whole interview man. That, that just <laughs> you know I'm I'm oh, I'm class of 02 man. Oh crap wow man <laughs> get out of here <laughs> Yeah, man, I'm I'm class C. That just changed this whole dynamic of this interview, man. That just changed this whole dynamic. Yeah, man, I'm I'm, I'm class of old too. Man, that's that that's crazy. Yeah, man, I like, I love the I love the math of man. Like those are some those are some good years that helped me jumpstart my journalism platform. I, I got a crazy story because this is how it all started. Um, mm-hmm. is I tried out for the JV basketball team my sophomore year at the math. And literally, it's literally the most embarrassing moment of my life. However, it's the moment like I, I realized, yeah, this is that I realized I need to become a journalist is because doing suicides, I passed out doing suicides. Oh, and man. yes, and I don't know what I was thinking going into that tryout. Like everyone, <laughs> like at the math, and when you go into the math, 
everyone wants to try for the basketball team if you're good or right. not it's like right. just if you, if you can make that basketball team it's like you you made it <laughs> in a sense uh, because you, you know how the map so yeah so i tried out sophomore year for the jv team and man it i, I was nervous that whole time I was making so many mistakes. I didn't know what I was thinking. Then we got to the suicides and we just kept running and running. And then we stopped. And mine at the time, uh, the coach was Coach Corey. And this man is a, he, he was tough. Oh my that's God. My, coach, that's my best friend. <laughs> coach Corey, I used to watch him when he was to coach the, fresh, the freshman team. And then they, mm -hmm. he moved up to JV. I'm like, man, this man, this dude was is tough. <laughs> like, I remember like going to games and like he'd be telling the players, I mean, these are these are players who made the team. And like, these are some good athletes. And he said, oh, you guys are not in shape. You guys are not in shape. I'm sitting here, I'm like, they more in shape than me. Like, what, how, what else they need to, what else they need to do, right? So right. I'm like, so going back, and I saw that as a freshman, he was on a freshman coach. So when I said, all right, I'm trying out for JV. And I might not have to deal with Coach Corey because he's on the freshman side. That same year, they moved him to JV. I said, oh, crap. <laughs> I said, oh, man, I don't know what I'm getting. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And like, and during that tryout, he kept saying to guys that I, he was saying to guys I knew was making the team, um, you guys are not in shape. You guys are not in shape. You guys are not ready. So all of a sudden, he get, we all get on the line. We start just running and running. It's on that clock, right? Uh -huh. So and all of a sudden, he took one of the players out and he said, all right, if he makes his free throw, y'all get water. If you don't, y'all run it again. Right. He, the play, I forgot his name, but he bricked the free throw so bad. I said, like, right then and there, I said, yeah, I'm done. I can't do this no more. So we, we ran up, we come back, and then I remember – I just fell on the ground. And I think one of the guys who tried out literally had to drag me off to the side and I had to get to the, and then I, um, I forget, was it, was it Wendy that was there? That was, that, that helped me. I think it was Wendy who was there and mm -hmm. she was giving me water. And I'm like, then she said, all right, take some of this water so you can get back out there. I'm looking at her like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like she said, drink some water so you can get back out there. I was like, what do you mean? I'm trying to get back out here on this, on this court. <laughs> like, uh -huh. I'm done. But yeah, um, so for, yeah, from that from that moment on, I say yeah, this basketball this basketball thing is no is not it's not for me. Like I'm gonna still be a fan, but however, my parents were saying, Ryan, you're a junior, you're going to your junior year, and you need something to put on your college resume. Right. And I say yeah, all right. I said okay, cool. And like, what clubs are you into? I said well, there's not a lot of clubs I was I was interested in it, interested in it, right? So then she said, then my mom and dad said, Ryan, you like to write, so why don't you join a newspaper and you could just do sports. And because at that time, I'm a huge DC sports fan. I, I'm watching sports all the time. I come home, I'm watching PTI with Mike, um, Tony Kornheiser or Michael Will Bond. And at six o'clock, I watch the sports center. Seven o'clock, I'm watching whatever the Wizards, whoever the Wizards are playing. So I was really into sports at a, at a young age. At the same time, I love to write. Like I write in my journal, short stories, whatever. So I said, all right, cool. So I, and I, I, so I applied at like, I got into the um, the Matthew Stag line because I took the new journalism class with Mr. Carroll, and from mm -hmm. there it was like I wrote my first story on the basketball team, and then like Mr. Carroll was so impressed with the story, and like I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh wow, like are you serious? And he's like, yeah, and like I just took it from there, and like yeah, I I, I use the math as an advantage to help me out because it's like you go to that school, you're surrounded by some of the top athletes, not only in the area, in the era, in this Maryland area but in the country. So it's like, if I can talk, like I'm talking to Mark Hill Fultz, I'm talking to like all these guys, the Anthony McFarlands and these guys that are there, they're in the lunchroom. So I started doing that and I never look, I never look back. Uh, but yeah, th those, the math days were fun and just, <laughs> and they were funny. Like I still talk to the, to a lot of my best friends today, went to the math that we still talk and hang out and they still talk to about that time I passed out. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I love that school, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, Corey just called me, matter of fact. Um, but yeah, man, it's, 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 I tell everybody that, that haven't been to the Matha or experienced it about the brotherhood, you know, it's, it's a real thing, you know, it's, it's people I meet to this day that that's older than me, that'll be like, you know, they introduce themselves as they say their name and they say, oh yeah, I'm the Matha class of, 88 though class of 94 like so it's it's literally man you just never know who who these guys are or what field they in because we everywhere literally 
in every industry. And I know, um, obviously, you in journalism, so you know about James Brown, and I'm pretty sure you follow him and all the amazing things that he's done. Um, so has he has he kind of uh, like influenced you in some way, or or like? I would say this: the person who's probably influ- coming out of the Matthews of Journals as a journalist who has influenced me the most is David Aldrich. Um, just, right, right. Because he, he, he's into the writing aspect as well. And I'm just looking at this man. It's like, this man was literally taught by Mr. Carroll. He went, walked down the same hallways as, as me and he's on NBA two and he's on NBA 2K. Um, and he's, <laughs> and he's writing for NBA.com. He's sideline report for Turner. Now he's like the editor uh, for the athletic DC. And I'm like, man, if he can do it, I always tell people I'm not trying to follow a particular person and how they live their career because I think everyone has their own career path. And but I just I look at certain people and I just as a sense of motivation, like if you were sitting in the same classroom as I was, that means and you got to where you are, there's no telling where I can go in my career and what I want to do. But yeah, that's one guy I, I look at, I look up to um in particular because he spoke at when I was I used to go to journalism camp at the University of Maryland. At the, so after after like my junior the summers after my junior and senior year at the Matha University of Maryland had a sports journalism camp I would go to, and he used to speak there, and he and he would speak and I'm looking to like man like if he did this and he's coming from the same high school I can I came from like there's no telling where I can what I can do I'm not I'm not right. saying we're gonna be the, the next David Aldridge I'm that's not my goal but um it's like it's just a sense of inspiration that. These these people, these journalists were in the same positions you were um, at 16, 17 years old. And this is how their life turned out because they were so dedicated to their craft and and just worked hard. And like if I if they can do it, then man, the sky's the limits for myself. And that's how I look, and that's how I approach everything. <clears throat> Absolutely, man. I man, I tell people all the time, you know, we have so many examples, especially just like you said, just coming out of the math, we have so many different examples from all walks of of life in regards to careers that you can point out and you know we kind of, we kind of got the same makeup in a sense because we was we was raised the same in the sense of that the high school like gentleman and a scholar like the way we was raised and the, the teachers that taught them taught us and yeah. it was it's it's, in the, it's the pedigree man it's I tell people all the time it's different you know and, and some people don't like it but you know we, we just we different bro we, we're 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 in a different class you know. Yeah, it's it's different. It's crazy. Cause I be everywhere, man. It's like I remember when I, I was at Damatha. I be going to the airports, and I have a Damatha T-shirt, right? And people would stop me. I'm like, you go to Damatha? I'm like, yeah. And it, it'd be like some alumni saying, yeah, I was in the class of uh, seventy five or sixty this. I'm like, I'm like, dang, mm-hmm. like, what you doing in Florida, man? <laughs> it's like <laughs> I remember I remember going to New York because when I went to undergrad at Iona College in New York, New York, and mm-hmm. I used to walk around with like Damatha stuff. And he was like, yeah, you go to, you go to the math. I was like, yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm like, I'm like wow, like even here in this small town in, in like New Rochelle, New York, people know about my high school and like talking about it. And then I remember like, I'd be in classes, right? And they says, and they'd be like, Ryan, like I'd be, I'd be have classes at Iona and like people would say, Ryan, why Ryan got like this, this type of mentality, this approach and like, and like, how is he always like so comfortable interviewing certain people? And they're like, and then like people have to run, like he went to the math. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it's 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 common to just walk walk down the hallways and you see like a future number one overall pick and mm-hmm. NBA draft like like that's that's how it is it's right. it's different I always tell people it's, it's it's a different it's a different experience it's like and you come across so many different walk so many people so many people from different walks of life and at the right. end of the day like no matter where they have gone in their career like at the end of the day, like there's still these, I still look at them as these guys that were eating in, in the cafeteria, eating three brothers pizza. That's how I look at it. So it's like, like I look at the Chase Youngs and like the Mark Hill Fultz and all the other guys who are in the NFL and the NBA and, and they're treated like these big stars as they should. And, but I'm, I'm sitting here looking at my TV. I'm like, man, I remember like four years ago, this guy was eating chicken tenders and fries in the cafeteria. <laughs> or you would see him, you see him in, with Miss Phelan getting getting tutored, and it's just like I just look at them so differently. And like even ask my friends who went to the math, it's like we look at them so differently. Where other people look at these superstars, I'm like, man, I was here walking the hallways with you. I remember you. 
I remember some of these guys getting in trouble with like Mr. Gardner or Mr. Rogers because they had like their tie wasn't on right or they mm-hmm. the blazer the blazer like the collar wasn't was a straight or something like that. But yeah, it's it's crazy, man. Nah, absolutely, man. I tell people so, quick story, man. Like I was coming up to Dematha. Um, I didn't really know a lot about Dematha before I went there. My oldest brother, he played at McNamara, but he was nine years older than I was. And back when he was playing in high school, I didn't have no interest in basketball like that. But I, I go to the math. I'm like the number two player in the country as an eighth grader. So I'm going there thinking I'm you know, I'm the man, you know, like I'm I'm this guy walking in. So I'm walking the hallways, man. I see a guy that's six nine. Then I see a guy that's six ten. See another guy that's six ten. Another guy that's six eleven. Another guy that's seven two. Then you got Keith Bogans that was there. He was the number one player oh, yeah. in the country. You got Joe Forte that's there. He's the number four. Then you got this a sophomore who Jordan Collins who's the number ten player. So it was like, who they didn't care who I was because <laughs> they had all these top players in the country and they were number one at the time when I went there. They were number one in the country. So it was it was a reality check, man. It, it put me back in my place. But um, I tell people all the time that the way the math is is either you're going to step up to that that level in 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 regards to everything in regards to the competitiveness the schooling uh was was asked of you or you just going to get lost i seen a lot of guys transfer out you know because yeah. you can handle it i mean it's, it's different and people that don't go there they don't really understand it but i try to explain the best way i can but it's either you you, you step up to the, the plate or you just gonna get lost in, in the shuffle yeah. and it happens a lot yeah, it's, I, I would say this, like, like, like I said, I'm not the guy who, who was on the, on the basketball team or the football team in there, but when you, when you're around that environment, and like I said, like, especially when I start doing like journalism and you're interviewing these guys and like actually focusing in like what the coaches are doing and what the players are doing, it's humbling, man. It's like, I remember going into my freshman year at DeMatha and you go in, I'm walking past Jeremy Grant and this man is like, God, like, like six, eight. I'm like, I'm like, Jesus. And then you like had BJ on you like, just as tall as him i'm like man this is crazy mm-hmm. like it's humbling because like think about it I always bring it always bring it up with like markel like this man is the number one pick in the draft in 2016 or 2017 my bad and he started off on the freshman team like he really went through that whole freshman jv grind it wasn't like and i've seen guys who who weren't who wasn't as good they start. They jump right to varsity, but like this man had literally grinded, like grinded his way, like and like I said, it's humbling because like I look at someone like Markel, he's probably looking on the varsity team like man, like that I probably be better than one or two of these guys, but this, but, but he stuck it through. But yeah, that I'm the math that like when you're in that when you're in that realm, it's, it's humbling and like you have to be ready to play. I'll say that like you can't be lazy. Um, I've seen like so many times. Like, I remember like going to the Mathic, watching the Mathic games, and Mike Jones, um, <laughs> he would like so he would take a player out for body language. I was like, wow, and like I'd be blown away. I'm like, it'd be body language, and he would Damn. just pull them out. Or like, for example, it would be a player. Let's say, I'm just throwing it out, like giving you a scenario. Like he would miss a free throw, and like his just demeanor on the court just changed after he missed that free throw, or he turned over the ball, and Jones would just take him out. I'm like, oh crap. Like, right. And it'd be times where like, he'd be furious. I'm like, and like, it'd be so furious. Like I'd be in the stands, like I'd be scared. I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> like I'd be shaking a little bit, but yeah, it's humbling, man. Like they don't play. Like you turn the ball over, you on the bench. You, um, Absolutely. you, you, you have your head down after you miss a three, boom, you on the bench. They do not care. And it's like, and the crazy part, they don't even care if you were the leading scorer, the top defender, like if, if you, if you miss, if you mess up or your demeanor ain't right, like boom, you're on that bench. I'm like, wow, this is it's it's crazy. But at the same time, it's like that if you wanna if you wanna be the best in anything you wanna do, I think it's like you you kind of need that. So yeah. So it, it's like if you could like I said, like you come to the math and no matter what you do, it's just you gotta be ready, man. You just gotta be ready. Absolutely, absolutely. So so how is it being the, the young guy on a team? Cause Sicily, man, you're on a team, you know, with the bottom of sun, you know. It's, it's a team. Um, how how has it been the young guy? Like, is, is it they hard on you, or are you like the, the rookie of it? So they they, get, they treat you a certain ways. So how how is that? I I would say I won't say they they're hard on me. I think it's it's like they they really understanding that. Like I said, like I'm only 24, 
So like, I think they understand like, oh, th- like I'm still new, I'm still learning. Uh, my editors are so, so like good at working with me and like, you know, if, if I'm, if I mess up on something, they're correcting me, giving me a lot of good positive feedback. Same with like on the, on, on the Ravens beat, um, their head guy, Jonah Schaefer, like he, he comes in and helps me out a lot and like, uh, and gives me like, he lends me uh, some advice as well. It's like, I th- and they understand that as well, but like, it, it's like, it's crazy because I don't know, like when I'm at Maryland, because obviously because you're still dealing with uh like people who are and still in college so you got you like your student media um uh so it's still like i'm i'm still feel uh i'm more comfortable there but when the ravens like man i'm literally like the youngest person at press box and it's like it's still taking some adjusting to because you walk in there i'm like dang i'm like like i'm, I'm just it's like it's it's it's, 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 it's hard to explain but it's like it's crazy that it's like a crazy feeling being at ravens press box are going to a Ravens practice and like you're like the youngest person that's that's close to your age is the guy they're interviewing like Lamar I think is 24 25 I think it's 24 so we're both the same age but besides that everyone else is like more experienced been 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 around for like over like 18 20 years so it's like man it's like sometimes you gotta sometimes like sit back and like all right you gotta like realize that you're not there yet and respect that and just take it one step at a time and that's something I've been I've been trying to do because it's like it can be hard because you look at the other reporters whether it's the Sun or the Athletic ESPN and you're like man they get they get in this story they're doing this they know this they know that um they know stuff like like they know stuff that happened 10 years ago off the top of their head and like I'm sitting here on my laptop researching this stuff um and they and they able to like do things so quick in an instant. I'm like, man, I'm like, crap. I'm like, you you trying to like, trying to figure out, man, can I catch up to that? But also, too, you got to understand, like, they've been there for a while. Like, they've been covering this team for years. So some of that stuff is just boom, just this comes off so easy for them. And you understand that I don't, I know like the more reps I get, and the more mm-hmm. I keep writing and covering the teams like it would get better but yeah it's it's just it's been a different experience it's been a, a completely different experience absolutely hey before we move on to talk some more Merlin basketball let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at bet river sportsbook if you haven't signed up with bet rivers yet now's the time because they are offering a 250 dollars match bonus for your first deposit but what sets them apart is that they require just one play through to turn your bonus into cash money. With their new rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, more secure, and more reliable. With the basketball season tipping off, get in on the action by going to betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers app. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. So, Maryland. So what you think they're going to do this year? What, what, what's, what's your prediction? How far do they go? Uh, this is another thing I've been thinking about for a while, like throughout this, throughout the off season, as this team was being structured together. Um, they got a lot of new faces. Like I said, I think it's like nine new players, six are transfers. So a lot of things we're out there watch this year is about can they get that chemistry and be able to come together? I think they're fortunate enough for them like guys like Fats, Eric, Dante, they played together before. So that might help out a little bit. However, like when we look at this team, they're, like I said, they have a lot of depth. They have a lot of size. Um, I I think for me, I think there are sweet 16 at best. Um, that's just everything goes right. Everything starts clicking and they can live up to the, the potential that I think everyone else sees around them. Um, I think they're going to be a really good defensive team. Um, I think offense, I think offense a little bit is kind of my concern, um, especially like the shooting aspect. Um, because like, I switched through these three games, but like I said, we're only three games into the season. Um, so I don't know, like their shooting struggles that we are seeing is something that's going to linger over the course of the season, or this is something like, you know, it just, just get in, get into the groove. But yeah, I, I think when you look at this roster and like I said, we look at the, the talent, we look at the size and we look at the overall depth. I think the Maryland basketball team, I think they are a sweet, a sweet 16 um, team at best. Sweet 16. <clears throat> That's not bad. I mean, I tell people all the time, you know, I get this question 
and I, I see it from both perspectives now because I don't play anymore, but I was a player. But when I talk to the fans and, you know, the alums that talk about the team, you know, obviously they want the championship. They want they want winning now. You know, they they feel as though that Coach Turgeon been there for a while, that we should go further, that, um, you know, he had enough time. Um, so we, everybody knows the frustration there. But obviously from the player side, we know that once you throw players on the team, I was telling somebody before, I mean, you can take a hope. I mean, you get the, say, for example, Kentucky's of the world that have all these McDonald's all Americans, but how many championships have they won? You know, so it don't matter how many good players you put on one team. It's all about chemistry. And at least here, three of those guys, that the trans, they, they played together before. So like you said, that's going to help. It's all about chemistry. It's all about clicking. It doesn't happen right away. It's only a certain number, number of teams and players that can do that. The Boston Celtics done it when they, when the big three joined them. Obviously, because those guys are very experienced and they knew their roles going in. KG knew to take the back row, the back seat. He knew his role. He said, look, this is Paul's team. Ray know his position. Everybody knew their position. But when you're young and you're coming on, you got a new coach and you got new players coming in from different roles. They're trying to click. Like you say, I think, I think obviously the first part of the season, they're trying to figure it out in regards to playing with each other on the road, playing in, in the comp man in uh, Xfinity Center, um, the offense, and then second half will be a more of a telltale, especially when they're more into the Big Ten play and, you know, get to face those guys and uh, see what happens. So, I mean, 316 is not bad. I, I think, you know, the fans want more. <laughs> I think, I think they, they want, you know, of course I, I understand that too. Um, but, you know, we shall see. They, like I said, they, 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 they're looking good so far. Obviously, um, some things need to be worked on, and I think they will happen. I think Coach Turgeon can, you know, turn things around in that sense of regards to getting that identity and then obviously to feel what players and what guys do what do best and how to – what uh, mixture to put on the court at the same time in certain situations. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a patience thing, but some people don't want patience. They want it now, whereas, you know – players on the court can understand the process of it all and the coach understands the process of it all. So. Yeah. And, and one thing you mentioned is like, uh, I think that, be that veteran presence uh, is going to help as well as like, especially in the tournament, a lot of those teams that do make it deep um, are a lot of teams with a lot of experienced guys on the roster. And I think you look at Maryland, even those like their top transfer guys, there is a lot of transfers, but like bats and, and Q, they, they're experienced guys. So it's like you're at it. It's not like when they went to the transfer portal, they were adding a bunch of like, like you know, sophomores or players who just played one year. They added up guys with experience. Um, right. So I think that that's going to help out as well in terms of, uh, and from the, from the mental standpoint, standpoint and handling those um, big time games. And especially when you get to the tournament, that's going to, you're going to need that. Uh, I think one thing I always say, I always talk to people, who have friends at Maryland about that team in 2019, 2020, um, the one that won that the Big Ten regular season. I is something about that year felt like a missed opportunity because of COVID. Um, because it's like they were riding with so much momentum going into the NCAA tournament. Um, they had a lot of expectations for themselves. They like they ended that season with, in, with a win over Michigan. Um, but it was like, I don't know, I just feel like I look back at them, look back that year, I'm like. I don't know how far they would have gone, but it's like, it was something about that team going into that, to the NCAA, to the NCAA tournament. Like, man, I would really like to see like what Anthony Cowan and Wiggins and Morcel and Jalen Smith could have done that, that year. Cause it was so much momentum uh, going into like the big, the big 10 tournament and the NCAA tournament. It's like, man, I always think about that. I'm like, man, what could they, they have like? What? They had a chance. They, had, they, they, Honestly, I believe that that was the year that they was really they had a real good chance of winning it. That wouldn't have been a surprise to people because, like you said, they weren't they were right or high. Um, yeah, they had some letdowns at the, towards the yeah. end, but they had momentum coming back. And I mean, it was like when that COVID thing happened, man. I was like, man, like that was the that, that was the year right there. That was the year right there. And I tell people, I tell the fans, I said, look, they almost if it COVID didn't happen, they that that have been another national championship right there potentially or even making it that far that was the team right there oh yeah it's like i, I honestly i like it's still hard to look at like oh we're this team that made it a national championship but like i think they could have gone in there with like 
some like with that discussion and like yeah I think they could have made some noise um yeah and in his final year I think like Sticks was playing was averaging like a double like he's getting a double double almost every other game it's just it was something it was just I don't know it's like like it was just a special feeling about that team down the stretch even like those times like even though they they struggled at times but like there was a special feeling going into that to that period like man it's like it was like a missed opportunity and I always think about that absolutely absolutely look here Ryan I don't want to hold too much more of your time man I really appreciate you taking time with your schedule to join the gold turbans with Travis Garrison on the networks hey man I wish you the best of luck you know so much all right, man, but hey, look, man, that's 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 super dope, man. I, I really, um, that that's good stuff, man. I'm happy for you, especially you, the math of brother, man. Like, come on, man. Hey, hey, what, what could you what, you, what should you expect, man? That, that's what happens. That's, that's that's what that's what we do, you know. So, um, man, like I said, man, best of luck, man. I look forward to reading your stuff, man. I know you'll do great because you know you're a stag, man. So you have you know you have no choice, um, yeah. but. I know you're gonna do a great man. I look forward to reading your stuff, man. I obviously, probably bumped into you at some of the Merlin games. So, man, best of luck for sure. Man, thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me. And and like I said, go stags. And that, that was crazy. I did not know, man. <laughs> uh, but it's dope. Small world. We're, every, we're everywhere. The map absolutely, is- absolutely, man. But thank you, man. Uh, yeah, but thanks again, man, for joining, man. I appreciate your time, bro. No problem. Thank you, guys.